Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Cooler Master GM34CWQA. But if at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there are Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into it. First off, starting with the size, resolution, and panel type. All right, so this is a 34-inch ultrawide with a resolution of 3440 by 1440 p Now, this is like the resolution that you're going to get uh, with an ultrawide 34-inch today. Okay, even high-end ones, the new Alienware OLED monitor, same resolution. Now, it gives you a PPI of about 109, which is going to be the same PPI, pixels per inch, how crisp and clear the image is actually going to appear. That's gonna be the same as a 1440p 27 inch monitor. So if you have experience with the 27 inch 1440p monitor, that's gonna be the same text clarity, the same overall image clarity. This is a good resolution. This means text, even if it's small text, is going to be clear. Super small text, you're going to be able to see pixelation with it. But for the most part, daily tasks, whether that's multitasking, work, or that's gaming, it's gonna be a nice crisp and clear image. This is also a good balance for your GPU to be able to push those higher frames in games because you do have extra pixels on the left and right, which is why it's 3440 by 1440p rather than 2560 by 1440p. Now, as far as panel type, this is where it gets a little bit special. Now, this uses a VA or vertical alignment panel. This is what basically all of the budget ultra wides use. And this one is, well, it's kind of in the middle between budget and premium. And that's why this is such an interesting review and a more difficult review for me to do personally. But the special thing with this panel is this uses a vertical alignment panel like the budget ultra wides, but it adds a quantum dot layer, which essentially is just going to give you a substantially wider color gamut. And this does that quite well. And as well, this does have a 1500R curve. So it is a slight curve, very nice for gaming, much better than a flat panel. Ultra wides, they should be curved unless they're massive. All right, moving on to refresh rate and variable refresh rate. This hits 144 Hertz, which is great. But then let's move on to the variable refresh rate. Typically, we don't really talk about much in these sections unless there's problems with screen tearing. And there isn't any problems with screen tearing, but this has FreeSync Premium. It's not G-Sync compatible, certified by NVIDIA, but it does work well with G-Sync. I've tested it and used it. It worked fine. So that is great even if you have a uh, AMD or an NVIDIA card, it's fine. It'll work great on both. And moving on to that, there's no screen tearing uh, at all on this monitor. Never noticed it during testing. However, there is a huge asterisk with the variable refresh rate. And before we talk about that, we have to talk about brightness. So let's move right on to brightness. Now this is a very competitive segment. And this area, brightness, is something that can either make or break a monitor because of the competition. So how does this one do? Well, it's advertised at 400 nits. That's right in line um, with the other competition. The Dell S3422DWG, my most recommended VA panel ultra wide, direct competitor to this. That one had an advertised brightness of about 400 nits and hit around 360, 365 nits. So exactly the same here. But moving on from that, what about HDR performance? Well, the Dell S3422DWG went from the same SDR brand. It's around 360, 365 nits, bumped it all the way up to upwards of 500 nits. I think it was about 520, which is a very good substantial shift uh, up for HDR. Now this one doesn't quite do that. This is hitting about 440 nits of brightness. Still in HDR, very bright, uh, and it looked quite nice. And even though the Dell is brighter, I actually prefer the Cooler Master because of the wider color gamut. I think overall, the Cooler Master does a better job in HDR if you want a good HDR experience, which I actually think the Cooler Master does quite well. Uh, the Cooler Master is not gonna have the brightest highlights in the world, but it handles that high dynamic range very, very well uh, in games like Battlefield, uh, Forza Horizon 5. In Forza Horizon 5, it was a little bit not as saturated, but that's the game, uh, not the HDR. But in that game, the clouds were, I mean, you could see every detail in the clouds, brighter sections of the screen and darker sections of the screen. And at the same time, you're also getting a higher contrast ratio. We're gonna talk about that. So overall, I think the HDR is better than the Dell with this Cooler Master. And overall, it was a really good experience and HDR is good on this monitor. However, here is the asterisk with the variable refresh rate. This could be a deal breaker for some of you, depending on how you use your monitor. When you turn FreeSync on, it decreases the brightness from around 360 nits in SDR to about 250 nits. 
that is a substantial drop. Now in a dark room, it's still gonna look nice. However, you're still gonna lose that vibrancy that comes with 360 nits. 360 nits is much more vibrant. 250 is a little bit just more dull. So that is pretty big. Now, I gamed a lot uh, in both with FreeSync on, lower nitage, and then I gamed with FreeSync off. Even with FreeSync off, I wasn't seeing any noticeable screen tearing. Uh, so if you don't wanna play with FreeSync on, I think you're gonna be okay. So for me personally, it wouldn't be a deal breaker, but that is something that you are going to have to decide if that's a deal breaker for you. If it is, I would then just recommend go for the Dell. Now I played around with all of the settings, changing the output from 10 bit to 8 bit. I just changed every setting I possibly could and I could not get that 360 nits of brightness with FreeSync on. So if you guys know, maybe if you have one of these monitors and you know something that I don't, please comment it below and I will pin the comment. All right, but now let's talk about colors. This is gonna be a big reason you're gonna buy this because it is priced with that quantum dot technology inside of it. It is priced higher, uh, but we're also gonna talk about price and value. But so the colors, they're actually very good due to that quantum dot layer covering 98% of the DCI-P3 color space. That is substantial. And one of the things that I really liked with the colors is when you go through the menu system, you can actually choose what color space. So you can choose sRGB, DCI-P3, Adobe RGB, or you can choose BC 2020, which is also known as Rec 2020. That is very cool. Now, as well as this, you can output 10 bits of color at a 144 hertz, the native uh, refresh rate at native resolution. Very good. That was through Display port. I'm not quite sure, but I would be willing to bet you cannot output 10 bits of color through HDMI probably at full 144 Hertz. You probably have to bump it down to 120 Hertz. Now outputting 10 bits of color is achieved by using FRC or frame rate control um, to then take a natively eight bit panel and output it to 10 bits. But that's basically how every 99% of monitors that output 10 bits of color, that's, that's how they do it. Now out of the box accuracy, I cannot guarantee that yours will be exactly like mine because these vary by unit. However, my unit came pretty dang accurate out of the box. Accurate enough to do editing, photos and video, uh, both for my channel, this one, Type-C Tech Reviews, as well as my other channel, Consumer Tech Review. Uh, so I edited both of those, uh, quite a few videos, and it was quite good. That is pretty cool, especially considering that these VA panels typically are not the most accurate out of the box. A lot of them aren't. So this was definitely a good sign. But again, the accuracy is gonna vary by unit. And if you do wanna get the most accurate colors possible, you are going to need to calibrate it. All right, but moving on to contrast ratio and backlight bleed. This hits a 3000 to one contrast ratio, meaning that the blacks are gonna be nice, deep, and black. Not like an OLED, but so much better than an IPS. In night scenes, uh, in more contrasty scenes, it just looks beautiful and it handles it well. And this is not always true with VA panels. Some VA panels do not handle blacks well, even though they have a good contrast ratio, and most of the time, this is due to ghosting. This is the biggest pro besides price comparing a VA to an IPS panel. However, let's talk about backlight bleed. Unfortunately, my unit had some backlight bleed. It had some in the top left corner and a little bit in the top right corner. Now, backlight bleed is not something that you're gonna have on every monitor. Again, this is gonna vary by unit and it is a quality control issue. So obviously my unit had some quality control issues. Now, I would not use this as a reason to not buy the monitor. However, you do wanna use this and use this information when you do buy this monitor if you choose to. Basically what you're gonna do is when it comes in, check for backlight bleed. Put a totally black screen on the monitor, turn your lights off, look for backlight bleed. If it is there, you have to be ready to ask for a replacement. But again, there's a quality control issue. This could be one out of every 100 monitors. You never know your chances. So if you do get this monitor, you should be ready to ask for a replacement if you do have backlight bleed. All right, now response time and ghosting. This is the good stuff always is with a VA panel. It's never simple, but let's talk about it. So first of all, this claims a 0.5 millisecond MPRT or motion picture response time. Now, a little bit of a learning thing. If you guys don't know, if a monitor says MPRT, don't even read it. It doesn't mean anything unless it is a gray to gray standard where it says one millisecond gray to gray, 0.5 millisecond gray to gray, don't listen to it. MPRT, motion picture response time, does not follow a single guideline. Those guidelines are totally based on each individual manufacturer, so you cannot compare those 
and it means nothing. But we don't care about that. They don't publish a grade to grade response time test result. However, that's okay because let's talk about ghosting. You don't care about the number, you care about how it affects ghosting. Firstly, VA panels typically are way more prone to ghosting than basically every other panel out there, TN, OLED, IPS, comparatively to those. Now, a lot of times when you tune VA panels to have very low ghosting, it causes red and green ghosting, where essentially those colors separate. Uh, and now this, for me, is a deal breaker. If a monitor has red and green ghosting that you can't get rid of, it is a deal breaker. If a monitor has a ton of normal ghosting, it is a deal breaker. So this monitor out of the box has red and green ghosting. There are five response time settings. There is off, normal, advanced, ultra fast, and dynamic. Now dynamic is the fastest one. That's what it comes in in the box. So when you get this out of the box, you turn it on, you start gaming on it, it will have red and green ghosting. Now both ultra fast and dynamic both have red and green ghosting. When you get this monitor, take it off the overdrive setting, set it to either advanced or normal. Off has a lot of normal ghosting. Normal has the second lowest amount of ghosting without having red and green ghosting, and you're not gonna have any pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting. If you set it to advanced, it's gonna have the lowest amount of ghosting without red and green ghosting, but it is gonna have a little bit of inverse ghosting. Now that's what you're just gonna have to decide. Do you want inverse ghosting, the less typical ghosting, or do you want just normal ghosting? Now I typically set mine in advanced and just leave it in that. But again, either one of those is a good option. Now, when it is in those two settings, how is the ghosting? Well, it's definitely low. And in fact, it's one of the lowest. And I think it's the second lowest out of all of the VA panel ultrawides that I have reviewed, which is most of them, but it still cannot compete with the Dell S3422DWG. When you compare them side by side, the Dell S3422GWG is just tuned perfectly for ghosting. It's unbelievable that they got the ghosting that low while not having red and green ghosting. Again, the Dell S3422DWG also has red and green ghosting in some of the settings, but in the setting that you can actually use it in without it, it's very low and it's lower than this one. Although this one is still pretty low. In game, the S3422DWG um, was very hard to notice the ghosting. You still could notice it, but it was very hard to notice it. This one, you can notice it, um, but again, it is not super smeary all over the place. Uh, and if you're not used to playing on very fast monitors, this probably will not be an issue for you. And it didn't stop me from having a good time or affect my KD ratio. All right, now for the menu system and controls, kind of a mixed bag here. So it uses a single joystick to control the menu system, which is a good thing. However, they put it over on the right side behind the monitor. You guys know I don't like it in that placement. It's harder to get to. And if you have a dual monitor set up, you can't really get to it. I prefer it under the chin right in the middle. That's the best placement like Dell has been doing recently and LG has been doing forever. Now the menu system itself is incredibly pixelated. It doesn't look good. There's basically no graphic design. So doesn't look very premium, doesn't match the outside of the monitor looking very premium. And as well as that, it's not super intuitive. Most joystick only designed menu systems are incredibly intuitive and easy to use. However, this one just changes the most intuitive ways of using the joystick to be non-intuitive. So there is an absolute learning curve um, and it's kind of annoying honestly to learn it, but it's not too big of a deal. Now, the thing that I do love about the menu uh, is that you have a lot of control over a lot of different settings. So they give you a ton of different preset settings, more than is on most monitors. Like I said, you can choose the different color spaces, Adobe RGB, sRGB, DCI-P3, Rec 2020, all of that stuff is more than a lot of other monitors will give you. So because of that, I really like this. So overall, it just gets a pass. It doesn't feel premium, but you do have a lot of different settings and I like that. All right, now VESA compatibility. This is good here, being compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter VESA mounts. Now, this is actually an upgrade because the GM34CW, the first ultra wide that they made, the previous generation to this one, that one actually had a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter base mount, I believe. So this is actually an upgrade from that. So I'm glad that they switched that small thing. All right, but now let's talk about the internal speakers because I was actually surprised by these. Wasn't expecting much, but they're actually pretty good. So these are two five watt speakers, which is pretty cool that they're more higher power than your typical two watt speakers or three watt speakers. So these are five watts. They get very loud uh, considering that they are monitor speakers and they get very clear up to about 90% volume, uh, you're getting all the clarity that you need. You're not getting any kind of distortion. Over 90%, you get a little bit, but still very good considering what these are.
Obviously, the base is not there. These are just tweeters. However, the clarity with trebles and mids is actually very, very good. Um, these are good enough where if you primarily use a headset for gaming and sometimes obviously need speakers some of the time, I don't think you would need to get a separate dedicated speaker system. You could just use headsets most of the time and then use these uh, when you don't or when you aren't using your headset. They're that good. I'm actually pretty impressed. These are probably the best monitor speakers that are just an add-on and not something that they actually advertise. Like BenQ has had an unbelievable integrated speaker system with the subwoofer inside of it. And Dell has done some stuff with speakers as well, but this is probably the best one that doesn't have a dedicated fine-tuned speaker system that's just a speaker system. So that is pretty cool. All right, now for the ports. This has one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0s, a USB Type-B upstream, and then two USB type A downstreams, a USB type C with 65 watts of charging and a three and a half millimeter audio out. Now the USB C and the USBs are a nice addition, make it a little bit more premium. And the USBs are over there on the left side of the monitor. So you're not gonna be using these for RGB like on the back of your monitor if you wanted to get some RGB strips and connect them to the USBs. However, they are great for charging headsets and things like that. Now the stand and build quality, okay. First thing we gotta talk about it. The RGB in the stand is absolutely the best implementation of RGB in any monitor. Stop putting them on the back of the monitors. They almost never look good. It would look way better to just get an RGB strip off of Amazon, stick it to the back of your monitor, be done with it. But this, this is cool. Okay, so the RGB is around the stand. It also glows down, so it glows in the front as well as inside. Now, it's very bright, but it's not bright enough where it's blinding you. There's a lot of different colors. They output colors very well, even colors that RGB typically doesn't output well, like yellowish golds typically are not that good on most RGB stuff, accessories and lights like that, but this actually outputs a lot of those colors very well. Uh, they're very vibrant colors and there's no bright or dim spots. There's also a ton of zones that you can customize through the, I think it's called the Master Plus app. Uh, but through that, it's very easy to customize everything. It's very fast. Now, the only con with this is the RGB does not just function through the monitor when it's plugged in. There's a separate micro USB that plugs right into the bottom piece of the stand. So there's no actual wires or any connections going through the stand. You plug in a micro USB and then you have to plug that into your computer if you want to be able to adjust the RGB. So there is that. And I believe the only way you can control or change the RGB is through that Master Plus app. So that's kind of a con, but not really because all the cable management is hidden very well. So I don't think that's a problem for me personally, but it is one more cable that you're going to have to cable manage. Okay, but enough about that. How's the build quality? It's actually really good. It's cast aluminum on all of that base. So it looks really good. And when you touch it, it feels incredibly premium. Like really premium, way better than the competition. I would say as far as material feel, it obviously feels better than basically all of them, LG, Dell, even Alienware, because Alienware uses a lot of plastics which look fantastic and feel good, but the metal, you can't get around that. It's metal and it feels and looks amazing. They use a lot of metal. The stand behind it kind of fades away, which is kind of what it's supposed to do because that bottom piece lights up in RGB. But as far as adjustability, it's got height adjustability, tilt, and it's even got swivel. All of those movements feel high quality just like all of the name brand competitors. You don't have any rotation like a lot of the competition has just to level it. Again, for me, I don't really care about that. My desk is flat, uh, but if yours isn't, get a new desk or don't buy this monitor. <laughs> all right, guys, but now the most important section of the entire video, price and value. This was the hardest one and took the most amount of time to figure this out, but I have figured it out and I'm absolutely certain about my opinions. And the first thing is how much does this cost? It retails for $649.99. That is a lot of money to pay for a VA panel. That is a lot of money to pay for a VA panel. Now at that price, it puts it 100 to $150 over most of the competition, if not $200 over most of the competition that also has VA panels. Now, none of the other competition has these quantum dot layers in them yet, but if you compare it to my most recommended, which is the Dell S3422DWG, that retails for $509. So this is almost $150 more than that. But if you go the other way, if you go up to an IPS, a more premium one, my most recommended 34 inch ultra wide under $1,000, the LG34G, GP83AB, that one is an IPS one. 
It's got fantastic colors. Overall, a better monitor than the Dell S3422DWG and better than the Cooler Master GM34CWQA. So if you pay $150 below, you get a very similar monitor without that FreeSync bug, but you don't have the color gamut. And if you pay $150 more, you get the color gamut and you get an IPS that has faster and less ghosting, obviously, basically perfect ghosting. However, the list price is not what it's currently priced at. It's currently priced at the time of this video, it is discounted and it just came out for $550. Now this could be Cooler Master wanted to set a retail price of $650 just so they could discount it and make it seem like a sale. A lot of companies do this. So if, if the list price is $550 and you're comparing a $509 S3422DWG versus this, I would probably pick this for only 40 bucks more. So what I'm trying to say is if this monitor is on sale, I think it's a good pickup. But for $650, it is not a good pickup. It's not a good value, especially when you compare it to the Dell. Now, if it is priced at $650 at the time that you watch this video, either go for the Dell if you don't care about the color gamut. You're basically getting the same experience between the two, but a higher brightness with FreeSync on. But let's say you need the color gamut, go for the LG, spend 150 bucks more than the list price of this monitor, and that's what you should do. But if you want the color gamut, and this is priced at that $550 price point, I think that's a great price and a very good value at that price. So overall, do I recommend the Cooler Master GM34 CWQA? Yes, with a big if. If this is on sale and not priced at $650, then yes, if you want that color gamut. But if you don't need that color gamut, go for the Dell S3422 DWG. But if you need the color gamut and this is priced at 650 bucks, get an IPS panel and get the LG 34GP83AB. Again, if you wanna check out any of the three monitors I talked about in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international link. I'll link this Cooler Master one, I'll link the LG, and I'll link the Dell. You can also check out my Dell S3422DWG review right here. Check that out right over there. So if you're interested in that one over this one, if you don't need that color gamut, if you're not gonna do any creative style work, or if you don't really care about HDR, get the Dell. Better value for the money, unless this is priced on sale. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, this looks like it's gonna be a long video. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.